I'm opening my Bible today to the book of 2 Kings. I'm in the book of 2 Kings today, and I'm in the fifth chapter of the book of 2 Kings. There are three characters in this text today that we want to bring out. The three characters, one, one's, one of the characters, their name is not mentioned. All they described her as is a servant girl, a servant girl. But we know the, the other two characters, they are very familiar to us, preached on so many times. Um, they are Naaman and Elisha. Naaman and Elisha. Naaman, as you know, is a very colorful character. The Word of God describes him as a man who is the captain of the host of the king of Syria. The Word of God also describes him as a man who is great with his master. In other words, Naaman has a reputation. He is great with his master. He's also an honorable man. He is a man of character. He is highly re respected. And he, the word of God tells us why he is respected. He is a man who has given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. He was a brave, very, very brave and, and bold man. He was a man of great courage. He had brought about tremendous feats because of his courage. However, there was a but in his life. Word of God says, but he was a leper. You know, all of our lives have buts inside of it. But, yes, we may have reputation. Yes, we may have money. Yes, we may have good friends and people who respect us. However, there are issues going on in our lives that really and truly we don't appreciate what's going on in our lives. We are not in the place where we want to be. I guess that speaks about most of us, that we are not in the place where we really want to be. We want better for ourselves. And then sometimes our problems that we face, somehow we are out of control or out of the control of these problems. Naaman was a leper. Naaman was sick badly. And what he was sick with was going to eventually put him in quarantine and it was going to eventually going to deface him. It was going to mess up his life because leprosy is a very ugly disease. It begins to chip away on parts of you. Some people lose a thumb, they lose toes, they lose their eye and it goes away from you like a chip, a piece at a time. And I know that life sometimes, based upon what comes into your life, it somehow attacks you. And its attack upon your life is to try to reduce you, to, to take away the best of you. Well, that's what was going on in Naaman's life. And he was placed in this terrible situation of leprosy. The young woman that I mentioned, I'm going to speak about, who the scripture did not give her name, is that 
is that young woman who saw Naaman and pitied him. Now, it is terrible, amen, for you to be in such a high position and yet pitied. The wise man Solomon said, an untimely birth is worse than people who have had wealth, power, wisdom, and did not have the ability to enjoy it. All of us have been given life, but not all of us are enjoying the fullness of life. And I want you to know it is God's plan for you to enjoy the fullness of life. In today's message, I am preaching on preconceived notions preconceived notions and you would discover that Naaman lived his life like each of you you live your life with preconceived notions you know Sandra Bullock I was doing some reading and, and Sandra Bullock made a very powerful statement when she said these words when your mind tries to verify a preconceived notion you can miss the obvious you can miss the obvious M many a times we live our lives with preconceived notions. And by the way, even sometimes our parents, um, our friends, they have preconceived notions about us. And so do we grow with preconceived notions about ourselves. And when these notions becomes our realities and we face our realities we find ourselves being confronted with major demons in our lives you see Naaman had reached the place where he had to deal with a major demon in his life the demon of leprosy he had to face in his life so he was looking for help. The young girl at his house said that there is help for Naaman. There is help for Naaman. She said it in these words. I wish that my master was in Samaria. If my master was in Samaria, he would have met with the prophet, verse 3. He would have met with the prophet. And the prophet would recover him of his leprosy. There is an answer for him. I want you to know that God, in the midst of your crisis, in the midst of your troubles, has answers for you. This is one thing I know without a shadow of a doubt. That God has answers for every problem, every situation you face. Every decision that you have to make. If you can really hear the voice of God and find yourself in the place with God and where God wants you. You can have the answer. The young woman said, if Naaman can only get to Samaria, to get to Samaria. Naaman took his journey then into Samaria. But Naaman had preconceived ideas of how his, his well-being will come about. 
just like you, just like me. Oftentimes we have our own preconceived ideas about the well-being of our children, the well-being of ourselves, the well-being of our future, the well-being of, of, of how life will take us. And we kind of prepare ourselves, and yes, we prepare ourselves to ensure at least we can be prepared for what we are going to face. So the word of God says that Naaman went down to Samaria, and when he went down to Samaria, he took his gifts with him. What did Naaman take? With him, the scripture tells us that Naaman took with him ten changes of raiment. He also took with him silver and he took with him gold. And when he got down there with his ten changes of raiment, ten talents of silver, and 6,000 pieces of gold, he said, look, I'm going to have it made. So many of you have, have launched out in life and thought, well, I prepared myself and I'm going to have it made. But as we, we approach life and begin to l face the reality of the experiences of life, we realize for some reason like we are knocking on the wrong doors. We are rocking, knocking on the wrong doors. This was the experience of Naaman. He went knocking on the wrong door. And the word of God tells us as Naaman knocked on the wrong door, he experienced disappointments. In so much that he had to leave that place where he went and continued on his hopefully good luck journey that his future will be different. Well, opportunity came for Naaman. The opportunity that had come for Naaman was that someone told the prophet that Naaman had gone to the wrong door and had experienced disappointment. And the prophet sent and called Naaman. And I can imagine with much haste, Naaman had rushed across to the prophet's dwellings. And when he got to the prophet's dwellings, he, 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 he was ready for the prophet to come out. Because of course, by now he, he had already advertised that he had ten talents of silver. He had ten changes of raiments, he had gold, and it was going to be paying his way into his success, buying his way into his dream future. But I've discovered many a times what you have and what you feel will work for you, don't work for you. It is so important, amen, to, to be to be living your life open, living your life open, having an open door into your life. Because you do not know what's going to come in to your life that will give you the unexpected blessing that is needed. And particularly when you open the door to Almighty God. When I speak about opening doors, I want us to be very careful and to guard the doors of our hearts. You know, I have lived long enough to encourage my, my younger generation that you, you do not make decisions only out of your heart. You make decisions out of your head as well as your heart. 
It must be, it must be balanced. Your decision making must be balanced not only by your emotions, but your decision making must be balanced by thought, by consideration, and by prayer. Naaman, because of his popularity, Naaman, because of his influence elsewhere, th thought that his, his influence would have worked over God. I want you to know that none of us have, an, have a premium on God. Absolutely none of us have a premium on God. All of us live at the mercies of Almighty God. And what is unique about the mercies of Almighty God, Jeremiah the prophet says that God is faithful and his mercies, they are new every morning. Yes, that's what makes God unique. In that God does not really give us rightly what we deserve for our inconsistencies and our disobedience in life. But God is ready to show us, our, show us his mercies and, and beautify our lives with his faithfulness. So the story goes on that, that Naaman found himself at the prophet's house. And when he found himself at the prophet's house, the prophet said to him these words, through his servant, go to Jordan and dip seven times. Go to Jordan and dip seven times. Note two things here. One, the prophet did not come out. Two, the prophet said to him to go to to Jordan and dip seven times. Watch at Naaman's response. Watch at Naaman's response. The word of God says, when Naaman heard, verse 10 of the chapter, when Naaman heard from the man of God that he should go to Jordan and wash, seven times dip into Jordan, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now, those, that last clause there, and thou shalt be clean, and thy flesh shall come again to thee. Now, the man of God, the prophet of God, is saying to him, you are going to have a rebirth. You are going to have your healing. But you have to to go to Jordan. Watch at Naaman's response as I said. But Naaman was wrought. Naaman became angry and went away and said, Behold, I thought, I thought, he will surely come out. He sent his servant. I thought that he will surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. I thought. Now, this is where preconceived ideas or preconceived notions puts us in trouble. The definition for preconceived is an idea or opinion formed before having the evidence for its truth or usefulness. In other words, uh, people with preconceived notions are people who have predetermined what their life or what the decision will be. Uh, people with preconceived notions are people who can become very prejudiced because they are looking at a situation that they are judging. One person once said that preconceived notions are the locks on 
the door of wisdom. I like that. Preconceived notions are the locks on the door or yes, on the door to wisdom. You see, as I said earlier on, when your mind tries to verify a preconceived notion, you can miss the obvious. Naaman had missed the obvious because he wanted to live his life based upon his own ideas, his own belief, his own concept. He was a man who had experienced some success in those ways of operation. So it was his inclination to think that everything is going to be the same as it relates to how he's going to get through with every problem in, in his life. I want you to know, by now you would have realized this, that, that is wrong. By now you'd realize that all that your dreams would wanted to be, and it, it did not come true, and you are not what you thought that you would have been, or you are living your life now with disappointments, or you are in a place where your wimp and your impulse did not give you the success that you were looking for, or have put you in the position where you need to be. My friends, one of the things that we have to continue to live with is the inevitability of life. I want you to know change is inevitable. We have to understand that since change is inevitable, we have to be prepared not to live our lives with preconceived ideas. But we need to live our lives intentionally. You have to. If you are going to accomplish anything in life, you have to live your life intentionally. As you face your life situation, as you, as you deal with making decisions, you have, as I said before, to give thought, prayer, consideration. You know, I have learned over the years that success in life is not about luck. I've learned that. And success in life is not about luck. It's about managed thoughts. I want to say it again. It's about managed thoughts. Therefore, we have to live our lives with focused attention and be deliberate in our actions. Naaman is given a, 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 an action, and he's given a command to an action. And he should have known better, because he's a man that knows what it is to, to, give, to give orders. He's the captain of, of the Syrian army. And now he's coming, but oftentimes, you know, we treat God, and we treat the men of God, and we treat the things of God. It's ordinary. We treat, we treat the, the, the call of God and how we should respond to God as ordinary. 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 But I want you to know, my precious friends, when God gives a command, God's commands are yea and amen. You cannot, and I say that, watch my finger, you cannot change God's mind. And, and whatever you have, talent or no talent, money or no money, 
influence or no influence none of us watch the finger again is this one I use watch the finger again none of us have a premium on God all of us have to be ready to go God's way to go God's way you see sometimes we want to operate on logic see Naaman thought that the logical thing to do with, for a man of his stature was to send him to the rivers of Damascus Farpa and Obana those were the two rivers he called. He said, why did the man, Elisha, send me to Jordan? The rivers of Damascus, Farpa and Abana, are far better rivers than the river of Jordan. Now, I have been to Jordan in, in Israel. I've been to Jordan. I, I have been to the Jordan River. I have counted five times. Um, Jordan is not a pretty place. I've seen it myself bamboo stools all over the, the ridges of that river um, the waste that comes down through the valley comes and flows right into the Jordan and, and the water is, is, is murky and, and green and, and because it's a restricted area it's an area where you cannot fish now. Um, tilapia, fresh water, finds a comfortable place to spawn and to grow and to inhabit. And I, I have gone into the water and baptized a couple hundred people in the River Jordan over the last couple of years that I have been there. And I have, my goodness... I have done it sometimes reluctantly because those tilapia will go through all your legs, swim up all under your, your toga. You baptize in a gong called a toga and go up. And, and my goodness, the slimy fish. And you, Naaman probably, you know, must be saying, listen to me, this is not, this, this is not the place I want to be. But, you know, sometimes God takes us and put us in a place where we have to humble ourselves. I've learned over the years that God has a unique way of working where the way up with God is first the way down. He that humbles himself shall be exalted, but he that exalts himself shall be abased. The way up with God, amen, is always something that God does where he wants us to realize that he is God and he's not going to share his glory with any man. One thing that Naaman did not learn as the young girl who was in his house had learned that you should let your speech be better than your silence or be silent. He should have just shut his mouth and do what was supposed to be done. The young girl, even though she was a servant girl, she knew what to say. You see, a smart person knows what to say. A wise person knows whether to say it or not, Naaman began talking a whole lot of rubbish because of his preconceived ideas. I want you to know, my friends, today, preconceived notions puts us in trouble. Truth only reveals itself when one gives up preconceived notions. Truth only reveals itself. So that one of no, Naaman's servants had to tell him, call it, 
Naaman cool it. Watch at the 13th verse. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. Wash and be clean. Forget about the, the Jordan. Just do it. Just go wash and be clean. Go, go in the water seven times. You know, sometimes when God speaks to us, most of us with an with a, with a analytical mind, and most of us sometimes our intelligence makes us foolish. And that the word of God tells us that God has taken the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Because many a times we find ourselves so caught up in, 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 in who we are and, 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 and what we think. And, and we fail to submit to what God wants to do. It is so important that you and I put ourselves, amen, in God's will and do what God wants us to do. Because it always works out right when we do what God wants us to do. So Naaman took the advice. Naaman took the advice and he put away his preconceived ideas. Yes, he put away his preconceived ideas. You know, it is said that it's amazing what ordinary people can do if they set out without preconceived notions. It's amazing what ordinary people can do. Now, or Naaman is now making himself ordinary. Because who is he who he's listening to? He's listening to his servants. He's listening to his servants, and his servants came near and spake to him. Sometimes we just have to listen to ordinary people like me, who, who sometimes you think, amen, who they are. But God is speaking to you. God is using his servant to speak to you about change, about getting yourself cleaned up, and about looking new. That's what Naaman was going to be experiencing if he would listen. It's amazing what ordinary people can do when they switch from being arrogant and proud and begin to stop their preconceived notions and submit to the will of God. The word of God says that Naaman went down into the water. He went down into the water. And dipped himself seven times. And he dipped one dip, and he dipped two dip, and he dipped three dip, and he dipped, and he dipped, and he dipped, and he dipped. <laughs> you know, remember that old Sunday school song? And he came up clean. Bible tells us that Naaman's flesh was like a child's flesh. Unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. That's what God does. When we put away the preconceived notions. Of what your end will be. Or what your tomorrow will be. It is not that God is robbing us of our ability to plan. And our ability to think. God wants us to think. God wants us to plan. But the wise man Solomon said these words. Many are the plans in a man's heart. But only the purposes of God are established. Yes. Only the purposes of God are established. Today I want you to take this message. And begin to look again at what God is saying to you. And as you look again what God is saying to you I want you to open up your heart open up your heart to God I'm going to invite Sister John and the musicians to come back and do one more worship song while I give you time to think and as I give you time to think
I, I want you to begin to put a prayer towards some changes in your life. Here they are coming, amen? Uh, to put some changes in your life and watch God do amazing things for you. Amen. Watch God do amazing things for you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that said I think that most of us are raised on the preconceived notion of the choices we are supposed to make most of us are raised on that preconceived notion of the choices we are supposed to make but, but life sometimes sends us a curved ball that we are not able to deal with and we are put in some precarious positions our lives are challenged and when our lives are challenged like this I love what President Andrew Jackson said President Andrew Jackson said when the time for action arrives stop thinking and go in when the time of action arrives stop thinking and go in today I pray that you realize the time for action is now for you to come about with the changes that you have to make and the decisions you have to also make and I pray that you would now trust God. Trust, trust God sometimes sounds so simple grammatically. But spiritually it works fruitfully. And it gives to us the benefits that we need to have. Because God never fails. I pray right now. Yes, Lord, I want to do. I pray for you. That God will, will bless you. God will bless you. God will guide you. God will enable you. God will empower you. That God will give to you his mind and clarity of thought and help you with precision of decision making. I pray that you would arrive not necessarily 
at your decision but that the, uh, but at the decision that is best for you I pray that God will give to you the results that is best for you and I pray God's peace upon your life I'm asking God that he will give to you the benefits and the success that you are looking for and the peace and the long life with health that you would love to achieve and that in the midst of every challenge that you face in the midst of every challenge you face that God will show up to help you I pray that God will make a way and supernaturally give you miracles that you probably thought you would never have in these times God can change things one of my good friends said these words on Monday night he said God is accustomed working in chaos God is accustomed working in disorder and I was wondering where he was going with that thought not until he quoted the verse that the earth was without form and void and darkness moved upon the face of the water and the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water earth without form and void darkness prevailed upon the waters but the Spirit of God was still in the midst of the chaos I want you to know in the midst of the chaos of your life God's Spirit is very present watch what happens in the midst of creation when the earth is without form and void darkness prevails upon the face of the of the water and God's Spirit moves on the water then God said let there be and out of all the chaos God let there be put order in the universe order within the earth when the firmament was placed where it's supposed to be the Sun and the moon and the stars all of them were supposed to be where they're supposed to be God clears the water from the land and said let there be dry ground and let there be the animals and the birds God established order and God say let there be man created man to put him in the place where he has given him dominion and authority to subdue and to control all that he has created this is what God can do for you today it's not just a colorful preacher's message is what God has promised he does not change his mind and he does not lie I pray every blessing on you to see God put order into your life and blessings into your life that you may experience a rich and meaningful tomorrow. And God bless you. Stay strong.